Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Warner, and today I'm going to talk about trigonometric identities. First, a quick review of the basic trigonometry of the right triangle. Let's fix an angle here, say A, and notice that we have the opposite side to A is BC, and the adjacent side to A, the one closest to A, is CA, and we always pick the one that's not opposite the right angle because the side opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. The adjacent and opposite sides are also called legs of the right triangle. We have the six basic trigonometric functions. Sine A is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine A is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan A is opposite over adjacent. And then the three reciprocals. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, and the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. These three are the most important. If you are pretty good with those, you're in good shape. More advanced students might want to know the reciprocal functions as well. Let's start with the quotient identities. These are very simple. The tangent of x is sine x over cosine x, and the cotangent of x being the reciprocal of tangent, is cosine x over sine x. Let's actually look at why one of these is true. Let's look at sine x over cosine x. Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. When we divide two fractions, we can flip and multiply. Cancel out the hypotenuse on top and bottom, and we get opposite over adjacent, which is precisely the definition of tangent. And that shows why this first quotient identity is true. The second one can be done in a very similar manner. Let's look at an example. Whenever sine x over tan x is defined, it is equivalent to what? Okay, well, let's rewrite tan x as sine x over cosine x. Let's rewrite this fraction as division. And when we divide fractions, we flip the one on the right and multiply. And now we could cancel out the sine x's to get cosine x, which is choice A. Next, we have the reciprocal identities. Cosecant x is 1 over sine x, secant x is 1 over cosine x, and cotangent x is 1 over tan x. These identities follow right from the definitions of these three reciprocal functions. If we bring the denominators over to the other side, we have the reciprocal identities in an equivalent form. So for example, sine x times cosecant x is equal to one, cosine x times secant x equals one, and tan x times cotan x equals one. Let's look at an example. Where defined, cosine three x times secant three x is equal to what? Well, we could rewrite secant three x as one over cosine three x using the reciprocal identity. These cancel and we just get one, which is exactly choice E. Next, we have the negative identities. The cosine of minus x is just cosine x. In other words, the minus sign just goes away. The sine of minus x is minus sine x. We could pull the minus sign out in front. Same goes for tangent. We can pull the minus sign out in front. Those of you that are familiar with even and odd functions will notice that this says that cosine of x is an even function and sine x and tan x are odd functions. Okay, let's look at an example where we can use these negative identities. For x between 0 and 90 degrees, tan x minus tan of minus x plus sine x minus sine of minus x plus cosine x minus cosine of minus x is what? 
Well, for tangent, we can pull out the minus sign. Same thing for sine. And for the cosine, remember that the minus sign just goes away. That's what the negative identities give us. So this becomes tan x. When we pull out that minus sign, we get plus tan x. We get plus sine x. And again, we pull out the minus sign and get another plus sine x. And here we have cosine x minus cosine x, which cancel to zero. So finally, we get 2 tan x plus 2 sine x, which is exactly choice D. Next, let's talk about the co-function identities. The sine of 90 degrees minus x is just the cosine of x, and the cosine of 90 degrees minus x is sine x. We say that sine and cosine are co-functions. Here's an actual example of an ACT math question. For any acute angle with measure A, sine of 90 minus A is equal to, well, if you know the co-function identity, it's obviously just B cosine of A. Just for completeness, let's write down the other co-function identities. So we see that sine and cosine are co-functions. So are cosecant and secant. And cotangent and tangent are also co-functions. Next, we have the important Pythagorean identity, which says cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. By subtracting cosine squared x from each side, we also have that sine squared x is 1 minus cosine squared x. And similarly, we could subtract sine squared x from each side to get cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. All three of these are useful, but this especially you should have memorized, and it's very easy to get the other two whenever you need them just by performing a simple subtraction. Please note that putting the square here is not really standard notation. It's an abbreviation. Cosine squared x means take the cosine of x and then square it. And sine squared x means take the sine of x and then square it. Note that this is different from, for example, cosine x squared, which says square x first, then take the cosine. That's not what's going on here. Let's look at an example. For x between 0 and pi over 2, the expression sine x over the square root of 1 minus sine squared x minus the square root of 1 minus sine squared x over cosine x is equivalent to what? Well, remember from that Pythagorean identity we just looked at, 1 minus sine squared x is just equal to cosine squared x. So we get the following. Okay, so I'm just replacing each 1 minus sine squared x by cosine squared x. Now the square root of cosine squared x is essentially just cosine x. And finally, sine x over cosine x is tan x, and cosine x over cosine x is 1. So the answer is choice C. I should point out one technical thing here. In general, the square root of cosine squared x would actually be the absolute value of cosine x. But because x is between 0 and pi over 2, cosine x is always positive, which means we don't need to put the absolute values. That's very technical, and if you forget that little fact, you probably will, still won't get any answers wrong on a standardized test. Let's look at another example. Tan squared x plus 1 is equal to what? Okay, well, this involves knowing a second Pythagorean identity. I usually don't like to memorize that second one, though, because it's easy to get it if you know the first one. I'm simply going to divide through by cosine squared x. So cosine squared x over cosine squared x is 1. Sine squared x over cosine squared x is tan squared x. And 1 over cosine squared x 
is secant squared x. So 1 plus tan squared x is the same thing as tan squared x plus 1, and we see that that's equal to secant squared x choice c. For completeness, I'll put down all three Pythagorean identities. The one you should absolutely know, cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1, and the other two follow very quickly from the first one. They're not as important to memorize. If you need to memorize one, make sure it's this first one.